Uh, this video is on uh, gases, liquids, and solids as it relates to their intermolecular or interparticular uh, forces and so forth. This is the beginning of chapter 11 on intermolecular forces um, relating to uh, chemistry, the central science. That's the, what I'm following at least in this these video series. So gases, liquids, and solids as it relates to interparticular uh, forces. Okay, so let's first talk about uh, kinetic energy versus intermolecular forces. So the, stat, the states of gas, liquid, and solid basically have to do with the difference, <clears throat> the relative difference, between the kinetic energy of the particles, whether we're talking about atoms or molecules or ions. Take the kinetic energy, the, the, the excitedness, the vibration, the, the movingness uh, of the particles, the kinetic energy of the particles, in comparison with the interparticular forces the forces of attraction between the atoms or between the molecules or between the ions. And so this is actually fairly commonsensical. So if the kinetic energy of the particles is much bigger than the uh, forces of attraction between them, then they're going to go all over the place. And so you're going to tend, to, so, so the liquid has more kinetic energy than uh, the solid does in relation to the attraction. And then a gas, of course, has much more kinetic energy uh, in relation to um, the, the forces of attraction between the various kinds of particles. So uh, again, as the, as the inner particle forces go up of attraction, uh, the more it's going to go towards solid and liquid. But as the kinetic energy goes up, uh, then it's going to go more toward liquid and, and gas. It makes sense, right? Uh, kinetic energy wants to move around. Uh, inner particle forces wants to tie, tie down. Okay, so First of all, the average kinetic energy of particles uh, is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. So as the temperature goes up, they get more and more excited, more and more excited, more and more kinetic energy. Um, absolute zero would be zero kinetic energy. Nothing can actually reach that. Um, but uh, as the kinetic energy goes up, the temperature goes up, basically, uh, uh, is the basic common sense kinds of things. Okay, so gases. As you know, a gas will assume the volume and shape of a container. If you've got a balloon, you know, uh, then the gas is going to fill however big the balloon is. Of course, a balloon's a bad example. Sorry I said that. A room, a room. The ga if you put gas in a room, uh, I won't suggest how you might do that, but if you put gas in a room, it's going to, uh, the gas is going to even out, reach a kind of equilibrium in the size and shape of the room. Um, of course, gases are compressible. You know, you can, you can push the molecules closer together. Um, gas flows readily, right? It, if I wanted to put a gas in this room, it would, it would filter out, you know, quickly enough. And then lastly, as I said, the diffusion occurs rapidly. Flows readily, diffusion occurs rapidly. Gases, again, this fits your common experience. Liquids. So the liquids and solids are called condensed phases because not, unlike the gas, they don't expand to the shape of the container. Uh, now, a liquid... <coughs> A liquid will assume the shape of the container in keeping with gravity, um, but a liquids won't, you know, fill up the container. So if you have a half drunken, uh, half drunk, half drink, ha half drink bottle of Pepsi, you know, the Pepsi's not going to fill up the whole bottle. It's going to stay, you know, in the second half. But it is going to shape, assume the shape of the Pepsi uh, bottle or whatever kind of thing you have the Pepsi in. So the liquid will assume the shape of the container, but it will not expand to fill uh, the container. As I just said, the liquid will not expand to fill the container. Uh, liquids are virtually incompressible, unlike gas that can be, you know, if I made this room half the size, we could still contain all the gas molecules in it. Um, but, but liquid, it, it's got a certain volume that's somewhat fixed. Um, liquids do flow readily. Uh, except when it's sub-degree temperature like it is today. Um, diffusion occurs more slowly, although, you know, not too slowly. I mean, if you pour, um, you know, some, a red dye into a clear water, it'll, you'll see it spread out fast enough. Okay, so we get to solids, another condensed state. Um, the solid will retain its own shape and volume. You know, if you put a sugar cube into a, uh, an empty bottle of Pepsi, it's not going to expand to fill the whole thing. It's just going to plop to the bottom and sit there as a sugar cube unless it breaks. Okay, um, 
Solids are virtually incompressible. They can be compressed a little bit, uh, but not as much as uh, liquid and definitely not as much as, as a gas. Uh, solids don't flow. And um, diffusion occurs extremely so slow uh, in, a, in a solid, although it happens, rust, you know, that sort of thing, although that's a chemical reaction. Well, this has been hopefully an exercise in common sense, gases, liquids, and solids as it relates to inter uh, the, the introduction to a chapter on intermolecular forces of attraction uh, within uh, gases, liquids, and solids.